Welcome back. In our last video, we saw accumulated soil temperatures in no-till catching up with conventional till around the beginning of July. Let's get back to the conventional versus no-till data to see how that happened. If we have a look not at accumulated heat units but actual temperatures, we've got uh, maximum and minimum temperatures. So these are the maximum for the no-till versus conventional and then the minimum temperatures. And again, going back to what you were saying, we had a lower maxima here, but the actual, actually the maxima actually went higher in, uh, in the so middle part of June for the no-till mm -hmm. soils. What, hap what was happening there? Well, I, I think what we're seeing is we're seeing that advanced growth in the conventional till okay. uh, corn there, and it's probably canoping that roll a little bit quicker and shading it, and we see those temperatures go down. Okay. And so the no-till is, is yet to fully become canopied, and it's able to take in more heat and store more heat. And uh, that's that part of catching up that it does. I got you, I yeah. got you. Then there was one last thing that I observed towards the end is our maximums in the no-till system looked a little bit lower and our minima looked a little bit higher. So could you, would you care to comment on that? Well, Eric? I think we have that buffering effect that Anthony talked about at the beginning, um, and then which is really good for soil biology. They don't like those big swings in temperature, so we're gonna not get as hot, but we're not gonna get as cold in, at night either, keep a more constant, more steady temperature. That's so cool. So not only does residue act as soil armor for rain and wind, it acts as a blanket, creating this elegant microclimate below ground. So what's next? How about we take a look at what most influences soil temperatures over the whole growing season. See you soon.